with this uh, greatest pleasure to introduce uh, his grace radhesham prabhu um prabhu is the president of uh, pune branch of iskon uh, he is a uh, founding director of vedic oasis for inspiration culture and education voice voice is a cultural and educational group that trains college youth corporates and children in the principle centered living and leadership it has faculty of 120 engineers and doctors it offers several systematic seminars and courses on personality development character build up team playing public speaking group discussions drama music etc prabhu holds an mtech from iit bombay he has been a top ranker during his dme be mtech engineering and mtech prabhu has authored series of five books spirituality for modern youth prabhu has published a five volume series of spirituality for modern youth discover yourself best your best friend etc prabhu offers seminars on stress management proactive leadership time management self management etc in companies and colleges international society for krishna consciousness conferred upon him the global excellency award for year 2004 for his valuable contribution to youth preaching there is no doubt that he is great radhesham prabhu is a stalwart leader of shila prabhu pas army prabhu this covid time was like a time of drought when we have close to none vaishnavas visited from the holy land of india we relish your visit just like an oyster relishes the first drop of rain water after a long wait and that drop eventually transforms into a beautiful pearl of bhakti thank you very much uh, today for giving us your association hari krishna हरे कृष्णा ओम ज्ञानतिर ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुवन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदाक वंदेहम श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागरजात सहगण रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादगणलिता श्री विशाखान्ता नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदस्वामीना नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातरिणे वाछाकलपतरोभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवतुत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम welcome all of you for this evening session today 
both uh, offline and online. I'm coming for the first time here uh, on the invitation of His Grace Satyasar Prabhu and his family. Um, although I have been in touch with him since 2019 um, through emails and phone calls, you know, very wonderful work is happening here by the commitment and dedication of his family. Um, after many years of a very promising career in Microsoft in Seattle, when he came here, he came as a missionary and uh, uh, brought great light to the people in this locality. And practically, this single family has done so much good for everybody here. I've been observing the developments here, very, very wonderful uh, initiatives and uh, um, so by, by, by this you can see one family can shelter so many hundreds of families by this. So I heard about all the different uh, initiatives, very thrilling to, for me to learn too. I come to America twice a year, once during uh, May, May, June and another time during September. I'm supposed to come from 2019, only once I came and then there was a pandemic. Then I, I'm coming second time now. So, he's a, he's a very intelligent leader and uh, giving all of you the supreme benefit of Krishna consciousness. So, today he was, uh, I was showing him a big list of topics and he suggested this topic, which I'm going to speak today. Uh, which is very much necessary in this day and age. As we are dealing with machines more and more, we expect uh, speed, we expect precision, uh, accuracy, uh, everything from human beings also around us. And when things don't go our way, we get really wild. So it's a very important topic. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, I can tell you two, three episodes from Srimad Bhagavatam. One is, you see, the Srimad Bhagavatam teaches us a very important uh, principle. We have to align with God, mm, whatever He says is good for us, without protesting. If you do that, you are already ready to go back to Godhead. That's the only thing you have to do. In Ar Arjuna said in the Bhagavad Gita, Karishre Vachanam Mama Artava, He said. What Arjuna said? Ha, Tava. He said that. What is that famous verse? Uh, Nashto moha spritir labdha tvat prasadan maya achyuta sthitaha asmi gatasandeha karishye vachanam tava He said, huh? he says, nashto moha, my illusion is gone Krishna, spritir labdha, my Krishna consciousness has come back again. And tvat prasadat, by your mercy, he says. And uh, sthitaha asmi, now I am firmly situated huh? in my proper consciousness. Huh? Gatasandeha, all doubts are gone. And therefore, conclusion is what? Karishye Vachanam Tava. Please repeat. Yeah. Every religion teaches this. In Bible it is said, Oh Lord, let thy will be done, not my will. Why? Because Lord's will is ultimately good for everybody. His plans are always good. Like you see, for example, God made organic food. Man went far away from it by putting fertilizers and everything. Now man is realizing, better to return back to Organic food. He went like this far away and he's coming back to organic food. <laughs> Isn't it? Similarly, man uh, gave up, you know, Surya Namaskar and all these things. And he sat and watched the TV like a couch potato, as we say, huh? just crunching the biscuits huh? and eating junk food. And when he got obesity, now he realized uh, all over the world people are doing Surya Namaskar now. You will see that. Mm -hmm. He's coming back to the Vedic uh, fold again. Mm -hmm. You will see that. We can say many things like this. Uh, nowadays in America, it's not a rare sight to see nowadays in the morning. When you go in the flight, you find many are eating salads and such kinds of items to keep the body slim and healthy. Huh? You know, people are nowadays aware of the ill effects of junk food and everything. Man is changing, what, learning from the Vedic life. So you will find that whatever God has done, it's very wonderful. God created the countryside. Huh? Man created the cities, as we say. Huh? How he has made... Uh, I was in the New York City with skyscrapers, huh? all around, huh? everywhere. It's very frightening. Huh? It's like a concrete jungle, isn't it? Man made the city. So you will see that man is returning back to nature. Similarly, God wants us to live our life in a certain way. Huh? What is that certain way? Two words you can remember, conformity and unity. Conformity with Him and unity with other living beings. One is vertical, another one is horizontal. Huh? 
Conformity means study the scriptures, attain the Viveka Buddhi, discriminate between right and wrong and stick to the right. That is the conformity. Like in America, you have to drive the car on which side, right side. In India, you drive the car on the left side. You conform yourself uh, to, to whichever place you are in. If you don't, then you have to pay a heavy fine. Hmm? In the same manner, there is word of God or alternatively there is sword. Hmm? The word of God is called Shastra and the sword is called Shastra. So for those who are human beings who are evolved, for them there is Shastra. And human beings who live like animals, for them Shastra. Hmm? Sword. Hmm? So therefore, then who are we? Do we follow the word of God or do we need a, need a sword? Do we behave like an angel or like an animal if you ask? The answer is we are a combination of the two. We behave as a combination. Sometimes our animalistic propensities, lower nature comes up. Sometimes the higher nature comes up. We all have experience of that. When Sattva Pradhan, Sattva Guna is predominant, then what comes up? The angel comes out. When there is a Rajaguna, Tamaguna, then animal nature comes out. Tamaguna means, uh, you know, lethargy. And Rajaguna means unrestrained action. So unrestrained action and lethargy are the causes of, you know, you know, hyperactivity and depression. These two things, you will see that. So anger actually arises from passion and ends in ignorance. Arising from passion means, uh, the nature of passion is it's a projecting force the nature of sattva is a revealing force sattva actually reveals the truth and passion projects itself out i am the best i want to prove i am right it has a projecting nature and uh, tamaguna means wailing you know wailing means covering tamaguna covers our eyes we become blind to see the truth rajaguna projects and sattva guna reveals. So, therefore, revealing means, imagine if this room is pitch dark, I switch on the light, then everything is revealed to me, the way as they are. And uh, Tamaguna means, it's switch, you know, switch is switched off. You can't see anything properly, we are blind. So, it's just the opposite, you can see. So, I, I'll give you uh, some examples now. Like Arjuna, for example, was in depression in the beginning, and then eventually he became evolved by hearing from Krishna. So, Arjuna was told not to fight, I mean, Arjuna was told to fight the battle. Dhruva was told not to fight. That's the opposite was told to him. Um, if you haven't heard that pastime of Dhruva, I will tell you the long story cut short in a couple of minutes. See, Dhruva, you all know, the very good pastime about Dhruva, you know, attaining the Dhruva Loka and meeting Lord Vishnu in the forest, you all have heard about it. The later pastime is this, that when Dhruva returned back to the kingdom, he... One, once upon a time, it so happened that his brother was killed by one Yaksha, his brother Uttama. So Dhruva became extremely angry with that Yaksha. Of course, he didn't know who that Yaksha was. Uh, he wanted to locate that uh, murderer, but then he attacked all the Yakshas as a whole, you know, killed thousands of them. And they started, they also attacked, it's a very long pastime. But eventually they started fleeing for their lives and Dhruva chased after them. They entered into a place called Alkapuri, which was ruled by uh, Kubera, you know. So, Dhruva entered that with his chariot. His goal was to wipe out the Yakshas. At that time, uh, his grandfather, his father is Uttanapad, Uttanapad's father is Swayambhumano. Swayambhumano came there and told him, Samyachar Oshabhadramte, he says, Dhruva, control your anger. This is no good. Anger is one letter short of danger. You know, be careful. You are a pure devotee. Your ticket back to Godhead is already there with you. Don't commit some blunder by which you will be detained in this world. Mm -hmm. So take care of your emotions. Manage your emotions, which is called self-management, we call it. Mm -hmm. Manage yourself. Before self-management comes self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness means we all should be mature enough to be able to look at our own self. Some people are so much in bodily consciousness. If somebody tells them, hey, why do you lose temper? Who said I lose temper? They ask like that. Huh? Then what can we do with them? Huh? Like one fellow went to a doctor and said, you know, 
Doctor, I have this problem of getting angry. Doctor asked, with whom do you become angry at home? Doctor knew that he becomes angry with wife, you know. But he asked him just like that, with whom do you become angry? Then this man became wild and said, who are you to ask that? He asked. So doctor understood the case is the right case. You know, very difficult to handle. He understood. So, how do we, I mean, deal with this? So, uh, Dhru Maharaj was told, Samyacha means, you know, restrain your anger. Because, you know, don't try to wipe out the entire race of Yakshas, you know, just because one fellow did it. Something similar was done by Janamejaya also. Janamejaya is son of Parikshit. So, when father was, uh, you know, bitten by a Takshaka snake, so he became very angry when he came to know. He said, wherever the Taksha be, huh, let him be invited by the Brahmanas into the fire. So, when Brahmanas chanted some mantra, all the snakes all over the universe were all flying and coming. Huh? They were all entering into fire. Huh? So, his goal was to wipe out the race of snakes. Huh? Then, you know, the, all the snakes prayed to the Lord and, you know, Brahma arranged one. I think Pulastya or somebody came forward and Agastya also, I mean, sorry, uh, correct. He advised them and told them, stop, you should not do this. Actually, many guys have tried to do this in this world. Even Hitler wanted to wipe out whom? Jews. <laughs> it's not that Jews are all wiped out, still they are going on. And he himself, uh, 10 million Jews he killed, then finally he committed suicide himself. So you can see that how it's a two-way, two-way dagger. You kill them also, you kill yourself also. Hiranyakashipu became so angry on Prahalad. He tried to attack Prahalad, but he was protected by Vishnu. Ultimately, he killed himself by his own behavior. You can see that. And Durvasmani became angry on whom? Ambarish Maharaj. He became extremely angry. For a small thing. No? See, it's worthy thinking about Durvasmani's pastimes. No? Past because Durvasmani, actually he had that ego that he is only a king, he is a materialist. I am a great, uh, you know, mendicant, saint. I am living in the bank of a river sometimes. I am living in the caves. No? I am very austere. I can walk on water. I can fly on sky. Now, I can compare this fellow with, you know, with, uh, uh, with him and me. He thought, you know, I am so powerful. So, that, that paradigm itself was wrong. Huh? So, this is the first thing that we all have to take care. What is my mental disposition before approaching somebody? Huh? If my mental disposition is one of pride, I am better, he is inferior, then our interaction is not going to be pleasant. Huh? So, that was the first mistake he did. Then subsequently what happened, uh, he needed some trivial uh, reason for showing his superiority. Huh? And what was the trivial reason? You know, Ambarish wanted to finish his Yakadashi Vrata. Huh? So he took some little charana and then came Durvasa yelling at him and said, you claim to be Vishnu Bhakta, you are a Vishnu Abhakta, he said. Huh? Because you have broken the law, you have invited a guest and you have eaten without giving him and all that, he started yelling and shouting. And uh, immediately he plucked some clumps of hair and threw it on the ground and created a big fiery demon from earth to sky, you know. And that demon was about to kill Ambarish. Guess what Ambarish did? Ambarish just folded his palms and remembered Lord Vishnu, thinking that maybe the death, my time of my death has come. You know? I am ready to die. That's what Lord wants me to. But then something else happened. You know, Sarshan Chakra was sent by Lord Vishnu. Huh? And the Sarshan Chakra cut off the demon, killed him. And started chasing after Durvasa, who had to run from pillar to post. Huh? He ran to different planets. And at last, Lord Vishnu also told, I can't save you. Go and offer Namaskar to <laughs> Ambarish. So, that is a very amazing pastime. Because of one taking a very, you know, big uh, I mean, reaction for a small action. Like that's what... Uh, uh, this, this topic is a situation that need a careful response with self-management, not that you react. You understand the difference between reacting and responding? No. Responding means you understand the situation with a cool head, think about a possible response, consult somebody intelligent and then show, uh, send your response. Mm. Rather than react means, you know, not thinking at all and just uh, you know, blurting out whatever comes in the mouth, it's like instinctive, huh? like animalistic uh, response. That is actually called react reactive, we call it. Hmm. So that's how Durvasamani uh, reacted with Ambarish. It's like, uh, is Ambarish, you know, is doing something very seriously, I mean, is it a, such a big blunder? 
taking little charnamrit. You know, he is not eating a full meal and then ignoring uh, Durvasa or disrespecting Durvasa. He didn't do that. Uh, but for taking little charnamrit, he made a big human cry. You will see that even we are in our lives also, once we are on an ego trip, you will see that some devotee we don't like. Anybody comes and tells you anything about the devotee, immediately one will start blaspheming the devotee. You will see that. There are people like that. They will start finding fault about that other person. This is actually called as bringing a machine gun for a mosquito, we call it. Imagine if there is a mosquito moving in the room, you bring a machine gun, like that you shoot. And four or five people will die and fall on the ground. And everybody is asking, what happened? You are killing people. Say, no, no, I wanted to kill the mosquito, not the people. <laughs> so, how foolish it would be. Huh? Similarly, sometimes we bring out a very reactive, uh, you know, response, which is actually very ugly response. And that actually ruins the relationships. Later on, two people cannot even look at each other also. Huh? They develop very, animo- uh, that they develop animosity, we call it. Huh? Animosity means hatred. Actually, anger has four degrees. It begins with uh, disturbance, huh? slight disturbance, like, uh, like ripples in a water, you have seen that? Slight disturbance, the air moves out of the water, ripples, disturbance. Then disturbance turns into agitation. Hmm? Agitation turns into anger, and anger turns into hatred. So which is the most dangerous in this? Hatred is the most dangerous. Hmm? In anger, at least you are yelling, shouting. In hatred, you will not even yell. You look at the person as if you are going to, you know, consume the person eh? or burn the person down with hatred, <coughs> like that. Eh? Because the uh, inner mechanisms have become very spoiled. Eh? Actually, we, we need to be like uh, innocent children uh, in the purest state. In the spiritual world, all the jivas are completely transparent, pure, hearted, simple, uh, unassuming, uh, humble, and they consider everybody else to be better than themselves. No? That's the nature of the spiritual world. Eh? Yeah, you will see there is a verse which says that in the third canto, 15th chapter. I'll try to recollect that verse. Paravadanya pratasarasa chakravaka datyu graham sashukati tiribar ghenam ya kola halo veramate cheramatra muchaihi bhringa adipe harikatam ivaga yamane. This verse says that once in Vaikuntha planets, uh, the bumblebee, you know, bumblebee's uh, sound is not very sweet, Zzz, like that it makes sound. It came flying to a place where there are many groups of royal birds sitting there, like the uh, cuckoos, great singers. Cuckoo makes very sweet sounds. And the peacocks, they make another type of sweet sound. Like that they make sound. If you go to Vrindavan, even today you will hear that. And parrots, parrots are difficult to imitate. Mm. So, these are all royal birds. They are all singing in the spiritual world, glories of the Lord. But when they see this bumblebee coming from the garland of Narayana, because he has seen the face of Narayana, he has seen some pastimes of the Lord, he wants to narrate it. So, all these birds become completely calm. Mm. They stop making sounds and they are requesting him, you speak now, we want to hear. So, even though they are great singers, they are not proud. They don't consider themselves to be better than the bumblebee. And bumblebee is singing. Harikatam. Iva. Iva means he is not a very great singer. Still, everybody was eager to listen to him. That means everybody thought, I am small and he is big. You, all, all of you give a try in your own lives. Any people, every one of you sitting here, the people with whom you daily interact are only single digit people. You will see that. I am telling you daily. Like you take a Mataji, she interacts with her husband, with children. Uh, maybe she will call her mother or father. Or if she is a housewife, these are the people she interacts with. And maybe one neighbor. One neighbor this side, one neighbor that side. It will be single digit only, you will see. Man also in the office, you may work in a company with, you know, 30,000 people, but still you don't interact with all of them. You only interact with your colleagues in the office, your boss, your juniors, your team members. And many IT people also have team members, six or eight people in their team also, many times. So, if you can make your relationship with these people very pleasant and very cheerful and joyful, you will see that you have conquered the whole world. Because other people don't know much about you. Only these people know everything about you. 
If you can conquer, conquer your relationship with them, imagine if every one of these people with whom you are in touch, seven, eight people, if they say, oh, I feel so good when I think of this person, that means you have already conquered. The whole world is conquered for you. So, but there are problems. We know that. We don't have problem with others. We have problem with these people only many times. Because ati parichayat, avagnyat, we say. When familiarity breeds, contempt. We take them for granted, we take them lightly, we try to exploit them, we try to boss over them. They run away from us because they don't like to be bossed over. They run away from us. And when they run away from us, we become angry at them. All these problems come. One Mataji had a Guruji. She went and complained to Guruji that, Guruji, see, I am coming to classes, I am attending all these programs, I am, you know, I am doing everything. My husband is not doing anything. And that fellow, his head is always like a matchstick. He gets angry. <laughs> like that for small, small things he flashes up. What to do? Guruji understood. Okay. So he told her, take this bottle of water. Of course, he just gave a bisleri bottle he gave her. He told her, keep this with you. She said, oh, so every day I should give him at least one cup of this. He said, no, 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 just keep it with you. Whenever your husband comes to fight with you, immediately put it in your mouth. And keep it as long as he keeps shouting. And when he stops shouting, what to do? Just drink the water, that's all, drink it. And then Guruji said, you do this and wait and watch what happens. So she took it home, she thought it's maybe it's some medicine or something. But why is he giving me, not to him? She was wondering, she couldn't understand. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, the next day morning the husband came to the kitchen. She said, every day you come in the kitchen only. Huh? Whenever I am cooking, let me finish cooking, then we will have the real fight. She wanted to say that. But then Guruji had told, don't speak anything. What you should do? Put the water. She put the water. And she actually, inside it was fuming for her. She wanted to say, but she couldn't say. She just restrained. How can you keep water in the mouth and speak anything? She couldn't. And the husband was going on shouting. Just for about a minute or two. And then he looked at her. Why she is not responding? Then he was surprised. And he looked at her, she looked like Hanumanji, like this, huh? what is this? She's keeping mom. So then he had no fun, because if she's not responding, what is the use of he speaking? He went away. And next week he came again, another occasion. So in two, three months, Anna husband got tired, because there was no response from the other side. Then she went to Guruji. Guruji asked him, how, is, how are things now at home? She said, you know, I'm, I'm also wondering what is the magic you did? My husband has become a perfect gentleman now. For the first time I am seeing him smile very beautifully, he has no problems. So Guruji said, I didn't do anything. I only taught you how to not back talk. Back talking. Because you are back talking, he would also talk back. And you will talk back. In this way it was going back and forth like a you know, table tennis. Both of you playing. So, he said that many things can... The silence is a more bigger sword than anger also. If, uh, if somebody mistreats you, two things you do. Keep a little distance and reduce your talk with them. They will change you. This is a far more powerful weapon than making a big hue and cry and tayataka, doing a big tandava and showing them how angry you are. They will not take you seriously huh, by that. So, therefore, uh, I told you the example of Dhruva, I told you the example of Janamejaya. Jaya. Uh -huh. They all became extremely angry. I told you Hitler's example. I mean, they were uh, treading a wrong path and they were warned to give up that anger. Uh -huh. It's not proper. Because in this world, every jiva has the right to live. Uh -huh. And we cannot stop them from living. Ultimately, God has put them here. He has given them the facilities. Who are we to stop them from living? So, you can't kill everybody. That's what uh, you, they were told. So, now, there is another example of one more person becoming angry, who is a mature person. Uh, we should tell you positive examples also, which is our Prithu Maharaj. You see, every planet has a presiding deity. Just like, for example, all of you devotees sitting here, you have a home, and the home is in your name, correct, no? You have a paper for the house. So, you are the presiding person for a particular home. Similarly, for a state, there is a chief minister in uh, yeah, in a state and there is a prime minister for the whole country. Wherever there is a place, there is somebody presiding. 
Similarly, all the planets have a presiding person also. So the earth also has a presiding deity, Bhu Devi. Huh? Bhuma Devi, they say, Bhu Devi, they say. So she sometimes assumes the form of a goddess, huh? sometimes assumes the form of a cow. Huh? So one time, Prithu saw that because his father was, was an atheist, uh, Vena, there was practically, you know, no yield at all, at all from the earth. Huh? Everything had dried up. So Prithu was wondering, I am doing yajna. Why is earth not yielding at all? At the time, he saw her in the form of a cow. So, he thought for a long time, huh? uh, what action should I take? He meditated, contemplated on the situation. At last, he decided that uh, some people will come to senses only when we show anger. I have to display anger. And then he took his bow and arrow and chased after that cow. Eventually, the cow agreed to, you know, she came to her senses and she was agreeing to give everything, all the yield. And you will read in the fourth canto. All the things were yielded by the earth later on. But the point here is what? Prithu didn't become instantly angry by making a snap decision. He contemplated for a long time, which means it is in Sattva Guna. So anger arising from Sattva Guna can be constructive. Yeah. Anger arising from Rajaguna, Tamaguna is destructive. You will see that. Hmm. So he thought for a long time. For example, a mother is saying, my boy is going and playing, you know, I told him to play for an hour, he's playing for two hours, he's playing for three hours, now it's eight o'clock, he will just go to sleep. And he's doing it day after day. Today I should do the drama of becoming angry. Like mother makes up mind. And she twists her eyebrows and exhibits anger, looks in the mirror, is it good enough now? This is the way I'm going to show him now. Then she goes out and exhibit some anger on the child and, and the boy is frightened. I have never seen my mother in this, you know, Badrakali farm or whatever, <laughs> you know. Then the boy becomes frightened. Actually, a good parenting means it's a combination of, you know, firm and polite both. So, uh, actually, if you are only all the time timid and polite, that is actually called as permissive parents. Uh, then you spoil the child completely. Or if you are all the time firm, like who was permissive parent? Dhritarashtra. Huh? Dhritarashtra was permissive parent. He spoiled Duryodhana. The whole hundred children were finished, you will see that. Huh? He gave him long rope to hang himself, huh? foolishly. On the other hand, you see, Hiranyakashipu is an authoritarian parent. Huh? He was only firm. He was never polite. Huh? Only firm. He was like torturous. Huh? Very, very, I mean, aggressive in nature. So that kind of authoritarian parents also don't make a good parent at all. They actually, the child will be tolerating the parents. When the child comes to teenage, the boy will back talk. I mean, he'll tell the father, you do whatever you want, he'll say. Now, you don't get behind me, leave me alone. You'll start fighting, the animosity will come when they come to teenage. Those who are authoritarian parents, they will see the children becoming antagonistic, and developing animosity after they come to adolescence. And then there are other parents who are neglectful parents. Oh, neglectful parents, they are so much into their own sense gratification that they never bother about the children. Whether the children go to hell or go to heaven, they don't care. In fact, they let children do whatever they want and they, they basically, they are too much stupid in their own sense gratification, money making, roaming, enjoying life. That means they are still like kids only. Parents are like kids. Mm -hmm. They have not grown up in life. They are neglectful parents. But the real type of parenting is authoritative parents. Authoritative means what? Parents to tell the child, Beta, you can play. How long you want to play? Tell me. He will say, I want to play three hours. He will say, no, no, that is too much. Huh? Then when will you study? Okay, then he will say, two and a half hours. No, that is also too much. And then there's a bargaining between mother and child. Atlasik agrees for one and a half hours. Okay, one and a half hours play and another one hour you study or whatever. Huh? So, uh, then the mother says, so, she, uh, now the clock is ticking five, you have to come at 6.30, all right? And the son also tells the mother, okay, I will play, come at 6.30, but you should not interfere, okay? Uh, you should not come in between my play and keep calling me. Don't uh, harass me. Huh? Leave me, I will finish my play and I will come. And you will see that those children become very powerful, you will see that. Hmm? Actually, yeah. such parents uh, can bring up the children very, very, they will become very great leaders, you will see that. 
the combination of polite and firm, bold and sensitive, courage and considerate. Huh? That's a very good combination it is. So, therefore, parents need not be angry. Generally what parents do, they are very permissive, permissive, permissive. Finally, when the boy has failed, then they uh, make a big yawn cry like Renegashipa after that. <laughs> These are two extremes. <laughs> it's like a pendulum. <laughs> you are extremely permissive, extremely authoritarian, again permissive, again authoritarian. You know, they are in swinging moods like this. We have to have a balance. So he, uh, Bhrutu Maharaj, thought for a long time, what should be my response? And then he responded. So, now many of you be thinking, Prabhuji is not moving the slideshow. What is inside? He is just putting one slide and going on with the lecture. So, I will show you. Now I will show very fast because you have understood the subject well. Now it won't be difficult for you. I will reduce the explanations and uh, move the slides fast, but you have to be very attentive to capture it, okay? Here I have shown some five situations. Uh, like somebody is opposing our opinion, some of us face a problem and somebody opposes our opinion. Huh? Or somebody made a promise, they didn't keep it. Or somebody didn't deal with you fairly. Hmm. Somebody didn't bother about your conveniences and all. Huh? And also, somebody didn't fulfill your ex expectation. So, one easy way I will tell you, there are five situations in which you become angry. There may be more also. You can, I, I will give you a very easy acronym for you. C E O I F. C O I F means if I am a CEO of a company, like that you can think. C O I F. C stands for control. Hiranyakashipu tried to control Prahlad. And if somebody cannot be controlled, we become angry. E stands for expectation. You had some expectation from somebody and they didn't fulfill your expectation, then you become extremely angry also. And then O stands for opinion. If somebody crosses my opinion, I may become angry also. How can they not respect my opinion? No one may feel angry. And I stands for insult. Somebody pointed fingers to me, they insulted or gave a feedback. Then I may get wild again. And last one, F is frustrated. When we are frustrated with things, then we get angry. Like one time, like my assistant always used to, you know, take me to the station towards, the, I mean, uh, when the train is about to leave, you know, many times it has happened. This I am telling about one of the assistants who was with me ten years ago. Huh? So this fellow would, uh, I always told him that we should reach the station half an hour before, you know. But his argument was what? Even though we would reach the platform, the train would be slowly moving and he would jump into the train. So finally he would say, see, now we have reached the train or not, he will ask me. Yeah? I said, what kind of argument? Yeah. And one of the days, as we were coming down the staircase, we saw the train moving, we saw the back side of the train. It had already gone ahead. On that day, I had two choices. One is to tell him, one is to prove to him that he has been always wrong, isn't it? Like you see what you have been doing, just see this is the result of what you have been doing. I wanted to shout at him. Then I thought very deeply, is there any benefit in shouting at him? At that time? Not much benefit, because train is already Gone. I only laughed. What can we do? <laughs> Just see, today you laughed, I said. So, he was very happy that I didn't become angry. Then I told him, okay, I'm sitting here, I have some mails to reply. You find out what is the next train which can go to the same destination. That's all I did. Of course, he found out three hours we were in the waiting room, we went to the next train. So, uh, sometimes in our life also, we have situations you, if you laugh it off, then you don't stress yourself. This is called as acceptance, we call it. Because you know, some people around you are going to be what they are, you can't change them much. If you are trying to change them, your uh, cool head will be stressed head. That's what Hiranyakashipu uh, tried to do with Prahlad. Prahlad was not ready to change. Hiranyakashipu told one example also. Prahlad is like a dog's tail. If you put inside a pipe for ten years and take it out, it will go like this. Eh? <laughs> Prahlad was like that only, he said. Then why stress yourself? Huh? If you can't change somebody, they are what they are, leave them, you know, they have to deal with God, not with you. You go on with your life. So don't try to change others. Um, we, we learn to adjust and go on with life. So let us proceed now. So you will remember the C-O-I-F. Okay. See, so respond not to react to situations, okay? Uh, responding is positive, reacting is bad, actually. 
See, I have shown you the picture here. Huh? What is reacting and what is responding? Responding, see, is thinking, you are saying that. Think and act, that is Sattvaguna. Rajaguna means your partial thinking and acting. Huh? That is, uh, you know, uh, that is Rajaguna. For example, I'll tell you one simple example. So you told uh, one devotee to go and tell somebody, you know, that uh, can you please do this program in the evening? You told this devotee, you told X to go and tell Y. Huh? Please tell Y to do this program today, I'm not having time. Instead of me, let Y do the program. Now, the X is going to Y and Y says, Oh, today evening Prabhu, today evening I have another engagement, I am sorry. You know, and that is a very vital one. There are a thousand people coming in that college, I have to go. So, can you please tell X that, you know, I am very tied up with that today. If you can kindly look for another devotee, it will be nice. Like that, who says? You know, Y, y says like that. Now, X comes back, I am sorry, uh, that person says that. And then this middle man, he comes to the first man and says, first man is asking, so, did I agree to do the evening program? He said, no, Prabhuji. He said, I cannot do, he said. Like that he says. So now, what goes on in the mind of X? I think he is envious of me, you know. I am asking, requesting him, you know, for one favor. And he is boldly saying that I cannot do it. He has no, I mean, what do you call it? He has no sympathy and, uh, okay, tomorrow if he asks something for my department, I will also say no to him. So now where is the mistake anybody can say? Ah, the middleman's delivery was a wrong delivery. Therefore, never write emails, especially if there is an angry exchange. And never write emails because emails can be misunderstood. One word, one devotee wrote, you know, dear so-and-so Prabhu, he wrote. And the Prabhu, he put a small p. And that other, other, <laughs> the other devotee said, Now I understand, you treat me like this only. <laughs> you know? I can take you for a task. <laughs> like that. So, so, therefore, you know, many times, and don't convey through others. It is always best, if you have a problem with somebody, call them to your room, privately, one-on-one, -on -one, explain to them, Prabhu, actually, I never said I cannot do the program. I actually wanted to do, but I had this important engagement. Um, at least you can call him on phone and talk to him one on one. Then that fellow will develop some sympathy for you. Hmm. Otherwise that person is going to misunderstand you. Many times communication misunderstandings leads to breakage in relationships. Hmm. So, therefore, and so that fellow properly responded, but this fellow reacted because of misunderstanding. You see? Hmm. Okay. So reactive people, hmm. You see, they waste a lot of time with unproductive activities. They often feel overwhelmed with things, he says. I'll tell you how. What are they engaged with? Many times, uh, back and forth, they say something and then they often times, uh, uh, they wrestle with guilt of having spoken. The back and forth mails can go, go huh? like that. See, proactive response means action based on chosen values. That means uh, stimulus dictates your response. So, I have given many things here, uh, examples, uh, which I will skip here, I will not go through this, we won't have time for this, because our topic is anger management. Uh, so, therefore I will go directly to that. Only some good things I will tell you. Okay, let us see who is able to answer this. You see, the top one is a point, there is nothing I can do, he says. See, this fellow is... Uh, slow in doing things and the other fellow's input is from this person's output. You understand, no? Huh? For example, say one Mataji is cutting sabji, another Mataji is cooking and the cooking Mataji says, Mataji please quickly cut, the program will end and we have to serve the prasad, huh? we have to cook, there is limited time. This Mataji says, no, there is nothing I can do, this is the way I cut sabji, like that she says. I am going to be slow, no, you know, don't uh, push me, like that she says. Hmm? So, out of the three, which one? You will choose. A, B, R, C, you have to choose. Yeah, who said that A? Yes? Any of you said that? Yeah, yeah. Somebody said C, somebody said. 
I can do provided I am assured that he won't interfere with me, he says. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Like, you know, you tell them, Mataji, if you keep asking me, then I will not cut fast. <laughs> Whatever time I give, you have to accept. <laughs> it's like that. Is it a very good answer? And that cookie Mataji is very worried. If I don't ask her, she's going to be even more slow. Correct, no? Therefore, some people are like that. You've seen, no? You know, some people, if you want something from them on a Friday, you, know, you should tell them that you want it on Wednesday only. Then by Friday, more hopefully it will come. Some people are like that, no? So, the answer is A. That was the correct answer, Matika said the correct answer. Yeah. Let's look at the alternatives. So, what this Matika can say, Matika, you really want it so fast. I am very sorry to say, I am very slow. Uh, if you can kindly call one more lady, then two of us will cut fast. And then we will be able to give you. Like that we can say. Hmm? Okay, second one. That's just the way I am. Huh? Like that he says, you know, because somebody may be telling a person that, you know, you know, Prabhu, why are you, like one example I'll tell you. See, one person was there who has a habit of telling on the face directly, anything. Like, uh, say he's X person, X. Now, his mentor told him that, see, Mr. X, you know, you are a little angry and so and so devotee came and told me that he got put off with you. So please be careful in dealing with that devotee. Mm -hmm. Immediately X went and brought the devotee to the mentor and said, Hey, tell my mentor, you know, did he become angry with you? Huh? Like that he asked them. Huh? So what do, you, what do you think that person will say? No, 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 Prabhuji, you never became angry with me. You know, I, 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 I never told you, Prabhuji. Huh? I am happy with you, you'll say. But then he has reported to mentor his actual situation. Huh? So the, uh, X has a nature of, you know, being very outspoken, that kind of nature. And then when mentor is calling him two, three times and telling that devotee said this word is what he will say? That's just the way I am, Prabhu. Like that he says. So instead of that, what he can say? A, B, C. Anybody? I admit that I speak in a straightforward manner without being sentimental. You know, why do you say I'm angry? Or I can choose a different approach. Or I suggest that we understand that everyone has different nature, Prabhu. He may be mild, I may be strong. Why do you make a big issue about it? If you correct me, you have to correct him also. He is too timid. And I am very straightforward. You know, why do you, like that the C is saying like that. Which one? B. B is the answer. Yeah, you are right. Oh, sorry. B is the answer. Yeah, correct. And he makes me so mad. For example, Sometimes you all have to work with another devotee. Like, you know, some Mataji say, Mataji, if that Mataji is coming for garland, I am not coming. Why? Oh, she has a nature to bada 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 speaking always. <laughs> she cannot keep chup chop doing garland. <laughs> Last week I tried putting some lecture, and then Mataji said, you know, lecture is too difficult to hear. We can't pay attention because we are doing garland. So I switched out the lecture and she started. Gada, 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 gada. And she doesn't say one word about Krishna. So, she makes me so mad. Like that she may say. So, what is the answer? One, two, three. Yeah. See, that A is the answer. Yeah. See, if she can control her feelings, then she gets seva. And see, if she cannot control her feelings, she loses the seva opportunity. Correct, no? You will see that, like one Mataji was staying away from the temple, and uh, Prabhupada came to the temple and asked, why is she not coming nowadays? And she came at the time. Prabhupada, Prabhupada came, she came also. She, Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, I can't work with my god sisters, you know. They are all too troublesome. Any uh, department I go, they have some problem. So Prabhupada later on wrote one letter to her. Prabhupada said, why are you depriving yourself of the opportunity to be in association of devotees? Huh? I'm getting seva opportunity. By being away from devotees, you will never be able to blossom in your spiritual life. Because being with devotees poses many problems and we get polished. And Prabhupada gave the example of, uh, you know, this uh, diamonds. When you take out diamonds from the mountain, they are very crude. Huh? They are very black and very hard. You put them all in a box and uh, put them in a uh, grilling in the machine. When you put it up, kata, 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 they all polish each other. Huh? And then after several hours, when you switch off the thing and you take it out, all of them are shining. So Prabhupada said, right now we are all like, Unpolished diamonds, devotees. Eh? And then when you put them in a community, kata, 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 they all you know, trouble one another. Neophyte means they are new and they fight also. Fight, fight, neophyte. Eh? You know? 
and then they polish one another and uh, at the end of their life they'll be pure devotees shining very beautifully hmm? so then after that she came and stayed with the devotees hmm? so we say that senses can be purified how rishi kena rishi kesha sevanam engage them in krishna service how can mind be purified manmana bhava mat bhukta by chanting the holy name hmm? how can intelligence be purified hmm? by studying the scriptures how false ego can be purified by living in the association of devotees hmm? they will purify it we don't have to worry hmm? living with devotees yeah hmm? so therefore instead of saying she makes me mad or he makes me mad we can say i can control my feelings and go on with service hmm? or you can change your day of service another day hmm? something you can do yeah they won't allow that it says for example you want a place huh? in your uh, you know in your temple property for keeping something or doing something say janmashtami comes say satya sarpava lord saw all of you he says that we are going to have five displays huh? and all of you community members you come up with ideas huh? for what five displays five booths will be given to you and you can put whatever you want but we are going to evaluate you know 20 25 ideas and the best five ideas will be given the place so somebody may say that you know oh they won't allow that they won't allow this why they may say that you know they have a bias towards other department but prabhu ji likes that those departments more he may only give them somebody may say like that huh? or somebody may say i would explain my position better but their perceptions about me stop them from allowing me somebody may say that which means last year i fought the previous year also i fought now i don't want to fight because already they have perceptions about me somebody may say like that huh? or i can create a effective presentation somebody may say like that so three things are there which one ah now you understood yeah yeah that means you know if you create effective presentation then you are likely to be considered hmm? nowadays even if you know how to package krishna consciousness many in non devotees are also very welcoming you will see that everywhere hmm? you need to know how to present it to them hmm? like uh, i was in uh, new jersey they were saying that you know they they are uh, doing some innovative preaching they call it as a sound bath they call it and what is sound bath it's hari krishna kirtan huh? people come together and slow soft kirtan a lot of people come and sit 40 50 60 people sit now many many youths and educated people are willing to come and sit in a place where nice soft melodious kirtan is going on because people are stressed out everywhere huh? people do come so we have to create effective presentation Uh, whether you are giving a lecture whether you are uh, doing a kirtan whether whatever you are putting up like we are giving prasad prasad is high quality hmm? so if you put up a effective presentation people do come when satyasar prabhu you know and uh, and his wife the family came here over the years how many uh, how wonderfully they have developed i am i am observing it isn't it so that, uh, and our putting our heart into whatever we do uh, that will make people consider us okay next one i can't explain to them i can't because i know that all my talks will fall in their deaf ears i choose not to because i prefer to try another route i can't because they will simply waste my time so three things are possible yeah which one yeah b actually all answers are coming from mata ji side i wanted something from prabhu ji side also now mothers will keep quiet now huh? we'll give them the bisleri water to keep the mouth huh? sure. now the men will answer now that's the correct answer one last one we'll give chance only to men we'll give okay i must do this work even if sky falls to ground so any man can read all the three any of you can read is it ready ready who said that ah that's correct answer yeah i prefer to do this for my own future good though it may be a bit taxing on my time and energy correct no that's correct very good thank you so uh, this is the meaning of practice uh, behavior huh? see one secret i will tell you how quickly this devotee is found out the answer i will tell you they have understood the hint what is a hint any of the responses where we blame others should be avoided <laughs> any of the responses where you own responsibility should be chosen you all understand this point that means we don't blame the world around us for anything we own the resp- his responsibility like for example i said a night i spent two hours standing and talking to somebody next day morning i tell the people that you know this fellow came he is such a chatterbox 
two hours he wasted my time. No? People say like that. Instead of what can we say? I could have chosen to speak 10 minutes with that fellow and taken off. Huh? But I was careless, so I lost my two hours. So next time I meet this fellow, because this fellow talks continuously, some people say, and, 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 and they, you've seen that, and, 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 they don't end the sentence only. Huh? So if somebody does like that, what to do? When they say the next time, you can say, ah, yes, yes, I want to listen, but I have a very important thing to go now. Huh? So you can say like that and push off. So don't blame others. Instead, uh, take responsibility for yourself. It's clear, right? See, four practical tips to learn proactive uh, response. Predict and prevent. That means you predict the situation in advance. Plan your daily uh, tasks and stick to them. Uh, Sometimes what happens when you have overwhelming tasks, then you become angry also. Not others. Have clear goals and vision for bigger tasks. That means, you know, anything you want to do in life, spend some time planning. And also, you want to change any habit. For example, say I want to change from being angry to being calm, cool and collected. Uh, like we say, Rome was not built in a day. Huh? It won't happen overnight. How do I do three things? Have milestones. Which means, like you have a watermelon, you can't eye it like that. Somebody should cut and give you, then piece by piece if you eat, even you can finish five watermelons also. Huh? It's very easy. But, if you are going to eat a watermelon fully, it's difficult. Hmm? Similarly, have milestones. Hmm? And have some role model who is already calm, cool, collected, and you admire that personality, associate with them. Like my sister lives in Coimbatore, you know. So there is one wonderful family, the disciples of Isulna Jayapataka Maharaj, there. Uh, one uh, Swaminathan Prabhu and Padma Sikhi Mataji, wonderful family. So, they are so wonderful family, that my sisters are amazed huh? because that Mataji would come and tell my sister. Huh? Uh, of course, they will tell in Tamil, she will say, Naan inni ki avarode kochan to ten. Like that she will say, huh? Today I became very angry with my husband. Like that she will say very softly. My sister would ask, why did he become angry? Huh? Um, I, uh, what, what did she become angry about? She said that, you know, please finish the program early and don't come so late from the program. That's what she said. Huh? So they will speak so slowly and husband is exactly similar. Huh? They both are like naram naram, we can say. Huh? Nobody is garam in their home. Huh? See, garam naram chalega, but garam garam, no. If two people are garam garam, then only that sound, sound comes. Huh? Like that. So, after meeting her, my, my sister said that they had a big heart transformation. Because in this world, you may read many books, huh? but you need a role model. My sisters are telling me that we've made her as a role model. And so that we can also slow, learn to speak a bit slowly. Huh? And not hastily. Not speak angrily, but speak politely. Huh? And not lose temper, but control temper. We learned how by observing a role model. Huh? Here is a person who is uh, setting an example, so let us also follow their example. Huh? They said. And another thing is, you also need association of those who are also endeavoring in a similar manner. Hmm? So, like, uh, like, like in Pune, we have a group. Uh, like one family gets up in the morning, they get up at 4 a.m. and they, you know, ring the phone number of another family. Then they will call another family like that. Within 10 minutes, you know, you know, they'll be able to call practically 20, 25 families. Uh, like that they will do. And then this way everybody is up. So it's a help, mutual help, you know. And then how do they know everybody has gotten up? The last 20th person will call back to the first person. Now the full round is over. Uh, if call is not coming, somebody is sleeping. <laughs> so they do like, so in this way we can help one another in a community also like that. That is the people with similar goals. Yeah. Again, this will take time to explain. I'm not going into the... There are many things said here. Okay, I'll go directly to the anger management huh? part. Because self-management takes time to teach. You have learned most of the important things you have learned. Huh? So let us go to the... Why do we get angry? We'll start with this. Hmm? See, why do we get angry? What, what is the time now? Oh, 7.45. What am I supposed to finish, Prabhu? Okay. Eight, I'll finish. Eight, I'll finish. And then I can take questions for another 15 minutes. I can take. Why do we get angry? 
See, here are some situations that cause us disturbance. All of you check in your own lives. How would you respond or react to this? For example, you know, driving car in a traffic jam time. Here in New York City, I saw like that, lot of crowd. Cars, yeah. We have a Hinjavadi in Pune, where in the morning, if you see hundreds and thousands of cars, everybody will go inch by inch like this. Like this, <laughs> like they're stop. Like that you go. You'll get really irritated. So, uh, some of the engineers started walking. And I asked, why did you go to company walking for, you know, they are walking almost five miles, eh? or some of them walking three miles. Eh? I asked, why do you walk? They said, Prabhuji, by walking, I don't get irritated. At least I can walk on the side of the road. I go faster than the cars also. <laughs> yeah? Plus, walking also is a good habit. Hmm? Many of them started walking now. Hmm? So, having a car is no fun at all. Huh? You know, having a car and inch by inch going, you get really fed up. She says, you may like mango jam, apple jam, but you don't like traffic jam. Hmm? You get fed up with this. Huh? Yeah. See, this fellow is getting a last minute work assignment. <laughs> see, how, you, how will he looks, you see. How many of you don't like a last minute work assignment you don't like? Last minute, correct, no? So, we have to learn acceptance. Which means we have to be mentally prepared that my boss has a tendency to always bring things in the 11th hour. It's not only in the profession, even at home also. Like sometimes the wife may say, please quickly go to the shop and bring some, you know, some LIG or something, sweet will come out well, <laughs> bring this. You may wonder, you know, see, here I find in America, the stores are very big, right? People go in cars and bring in whole, whole thing they bring and keep it, I think. In, in India, you'll find small, small shops. You just go down and you can get it and come, correct, no? Here people stock a lot here, correct? But imagine if somebody doesn't stock, you have to get every small thing, you get irritated. But if some people have certain nature, which they can't change it. So, how do you respond? This is, this is actually, this student has misplaced something and searching and not able to find out, so getting irritated, depressed. Hmm? Somebody is blaming you like this, it's very painful. Hmm? If somebody says, you did the mistake, no, I didn't do, you did it, they will immediately blurt out. Hmm? Waiting in a grocery for, a, for some part, sometimes in a long queue. See, I told you, CEO IF, you remember? This is a control thing. We want to control everything in the world and we want everybody at our beck and call. That's the main problem. The jiva has come to this world with three impurities. Proprietorship, uh, proprietorship, controllership, enjoyership. Huh? Like that. That's what he wanted to do. Huh? Proprietorship means, you know, like you see, Yeradankashiva wanted to be proprietor of all the three worlds. Alexander, in 29 years of age, he wanted to Oh, you know, conquer the whole world. Mughals uh, came to India for 700 years or so. They occupied the land. Proprietorship. Bali Maharaj also occupied the land of the demigods and it was taken away by Ibam and Deva. Correct? It's all proprietorship. So, and then subsequently, not only possessing land, possessing people uh, uh, and possessing wealth, all these things come in there. Then controllership means people like to boss over others. Uh, Actually, bossing over land is also enjoyable, but bossing over people is even more enjoyable. Hmm? Uh, somebody can be yes men surrounding you, saluting you. Ravana had yes men Kamsa had yes men They feel very nice. Uh, a timid person can nicely feed an arrogant person. Hmm? They both go, both go very well together. Hmm? So, uh, and then uh, enjoyership means... Hmm? So, you can uh, correlate and tell me, proprietorship, controllership, enjoyership, it matches with which of the three qualities of lust, anger and greed? Can anybody say? Proprietorship goes with which one? It comes from which of the base qualities? Greed, exactly. Greed. And uh, controllership? Anger. When we are becoming angry, that means we, we are not realizing Krishna is in control. We are thinking, who is in control? I am in control. We think like that. Huh? And that is why when things are not in our control, we get really wild. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, that is very important. And then third one is enjoyership is lust. Hmm. You so, you remember Ravana for enjoyership and you remember Druvasamani for controllership. You can remember uh, Bali Maharaj or you know, you can remember uh, uh, Alexander, all these examples for proprietorship. Hmm. So, these three are the reasons for our frustration. These three are impurities in our heart actually. If you cleanse them, how do you cleanse them? You know, Instead of proprietorship, you should say, everything belongs to Krishna. Even I belong to Krishna. There is a beautiful song, you know. 
मानस देखो गेहो यो कि मोर हर पेलो तो वे नंद किशोर सच मन आई स्वांग ऑफर मै माइंड माई बॉडी मानस देह गेह मीन्स होम जो किचु मोर वॉट एवर ए पर्स कृष्ण आई वॉन्ट टू ऑफर इट ऑल अट योर लोड स्वीट अंदर ही सही संपदे विपदे जीवने मरणे दाय मामा गेला तू वा ओ पदा वरणे ही सही वधर आई एम वेल्डी और वधर आई एम पुअर आई एल ऑफर एवरीथिंग टू यू वधर आई एम लिविंग और इवन आफ्टर डेथ इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ आल्सो आई एल कंटिन्यू वर्शिपिंग यू ही सही सही मारो भी राखो भी जो ये चातो हार नित्य दास प्रति तुवा अधिकार इस एंग वेदर यू पुट मी इन अ सिचुएशन ऑफ सफरिंग और यू एम्ब्रेस मी आई विल नेवर लीव यू लॉट ऑफ स्पीड लाइक यू नो वन कोलेशे करा इन वन ऑफ द तमिल सॉंग्स इस एंग माय डियर लॉर्ड आई वांट टू अडॉप्ट द philosophy of ananya gadit form he says ananya gadit form means your your patient goes to a doctor doctor says six days you will take injection every day you will go to hospital show the hand and the doctor will give uh, injection correct no uh, he'll give an injection so his friend may tell him are you fool every day you are going to the same fellow and you are showing the hand and he is giving injection you know he is uh, causing you pain why do you go but this person knows well that that doctor is my friend hmm. why is my friend he'll cure my disease similarly kolashakara says my dear lord even if you put me in sufferings i will again and again come to you because you are my well wisher hmm. just like a child sometimes the mother becomes angry with the child when the child is very naughty sometimes child touches fire sometimes takes a knife and puts in the mouth <laughs> sometimes the child is doing naughty things and then the mother may slap a child but the child will loudly cry and embrace the feet of the mother you seen that If the child run away from the mother, the child doesn't know anybody else. So it will always embrace the mother. Similarly, he Kulishakar says, "I will always take your shelter." He says. So which means I am. Not, and then he also says, "Kita janma ho vu yata tu adas bahir mukha Brahma janme nahi mora ash." He is saying, "I don't want to become a Brahma who is forgetful of you." Huh? On the other hand, I w- I won't mind becoming a worm in the house of a devotee because there'll be some grains of prasadam lying there. I can eat and lead a very happy devotee life. <laughs> He's saying like that. So, see, why do we sing these songs? So that we we have to have a paradigm shift. <laughs> Instead of thinking I am proprietor, we should think Krishna is, you know, everything belongs to Krishna. Instead of thinking I am the controller, there's another verse: "To me, Sarveshwar Ishvara." <laughs> Prajendra Kumara. That was says, Krishna, you are actually Ishwar of all Ishwars. In that song, he says, you know, Chaturmukha Brahma, Panchamukha Shiva, they all are your devotees. If you are their controller, what about me? A tiny tot. He says, like in our Venkatesh Subrahmanyam, we recite, you know, Sajatormukha Shanmukha Panchamukha Pramukha Kila Daiva Tama Oli Mane Sharana Gata Vatsa Lasara Nidhe Paripala Yamam Rishashai Lapate Adi Vela. So in this way, he says. Chaturmukha, Shanmukha, Chaturmukha, Panchamukha, Shanmukha, they all are your devotees, he says. So we should think about it. Huh? Brahma, in, uh, you know, Shiva, they are all going uh, to take Darshan of Balaji and how great he is, how small I am. Then we agree, agree, he is controller, huh? I am not controller. Similarly, enjoyer, how do we give up the enjoying mentality? Hmm? You grow flowers for Krishna and you offer it to him in, as a beautiful garland. You cook bhoga. Hmm? And offer it to Krishna. Even if a prasadam is a delicious item, don't put in the mouth immediately without offering to him. So in this way, gradually we will give up these three impure mentalities. And then, so this is about control. This is about expectations. See this fellow. Why is he drinking? Because he is unable to control his expectations. Yeah. And this fellow's opinion is not accepted. He is wild now. Yeah. And there is somebody is insulted. and somebody cannot enjoy is frustrated yeah so in this way these are the reasons for one becoming is a natural emotional response to this perceived threat actually this is there are not threats at all <laughs> what threats are this perceived threats somebody faces failure yeah so we are not controllers we are co-workers with god we sow the seed god gives the rains 
we give the interview, the panel chooses us. We write the exam and the teachers will give the marks. So we are not totally independent. Our part is only 50%. Huh? Yeah. Frustration arises because of thinking, I am the controller. Hmm. So Arjuna was a co-worker with Krishna. So CEO, I have, I told you about this. These are the reasons why we get angry, okay? Hmm. Then I have told about the soul which you all know very well. So, uh, and then, Kami, Yesha, Krodesha, everything begins with lust, Krishna says. Lust means Adam and desire for the prohibited. That is called lust. Huh? If a child wants to eat a lot of cocoa chocolates, that is lust. If Ravana wants to take away other men's wives, that is lust. Anything prohibited, like four activities, you know, illicit sex, uh, meat eating, gambling, intoxication, those are also, indulging in them is also lust. Okay, now let us proceed faster. Second, okay, how to overcome anger, let us say this. See, association with saintly persons, A. Yeah, this is very important. Regularly hearing from scriptures, pacifists, B for books, you know that. C for chanting. Uh, and they have given some... And then uh, diet makes a very big difference. If you eat chilies, uh, if, you, if a chili goes into your mouth, tears come from the eyes. Uh, it's very passionate food. And next day when there is a motion, motion also is burning, uh, both times. Uh, it's horrible. So one shouldn't take passionate foods. Uh, one should eat sattvic ahara. Hmm? Actually, if you, Prabhupada says, if you don't sleep six hours of sound sleep, your brain gets heated up and therefore you become angry, Prabhupada says. Actually, early to bed, early to rise. I have a video which I will leave with uh, Satyasar Prabhu. Satyasar Prabhu, whatever I told you, I'll give you. You may have to remind me, I'll forget. Uh, can you remind me? I will uh, send. It's a four minutes video on why the top notch CEOs in the world get up at 4 a.m. Hmm? I will send him that, you can see that. He says that those he was sleep by 9.30-10, he says. Because 10 to 2 is very important sleep. Night 10, p.m. to morning to a.m. Then your brain will be cool. No? And unhealthy lifestyle, we should give up the, we should not break the four legs. No? A two inch, <laughs> two inch tongue can kill a six feet man. <laughs> nice, nice. Obesity. No? Hey, give me means uh, gambling, intoxication, meat eating, illicit sex, okay. Okay, now here is a, there are four helpful steps suggested by psychoanalysts for anger, you see here. Recognize that you are angry, identify the source and understand why you are angry by doing ABC analysis, okay. Uh, and deal with the situation. What is ABC analysis, you see? That's an activating agent. One example is given here. See, your friend told someone that you are not smart and doing, quick in doing the job, correct, no? Uh, say for example, there is some seva in the Janmashtami time. You were doing it like, for a couple of years. Next year, the service was taken from you and given to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Probably, some leaders thought that you are a bit slow in doing it or you are not very perfect in doing it. Like crowd control, for example, you know. One is supposed to stop people, but not hurt people. Mm -hmm. If somebody is not able to speak to people nicely, then they are removed from the service and given some other service. So, somebody told you, you are not smart. We can doing That's activating agent. So, our belief system is, you sh your friend should not have criticized you. You feel he is foolish and does not know about who you are and how smart you are and how quick you are at job. Correct, no? We have our own belief system about ourselves. And then the emotional consequences, we feel hurt. And this is how the anger starts. So C is for consequences. And B is for your own beliefs about you. And A is for activating agent. Do you remember this? Activating agent belief system and consequences. And the result is what you see here. Consequential behavior. You shout back and get angry at him. Huh? That's why you become angry. So three ways. If you do expressing, then others get hurt. If you, uh, if you suppress yourself, actually if you express anger also again and again it keeps coming like waves. Huh? And it becomes a habit. And if you suppress, then it goes into the mind and turns into hatred. Both are bad actually. Don't express and don't suppress. Then what is to be done? What is the right way? Burn the anger before anger burns you. Anger, happiness and peace. So how to, how to burn the anger? How do we do that? 
So here are some uh, slogans given by great uh, personalities. So one of the things we can keep such quotes with us. Whenever you are angry, be assured that it is not only the present evil, but it will form a habit. It's like adding fuel to fire. He says, don't increase the anger, at least deal with it right now. Hmm. So here are three solutions given. Be patient, be austere and be forgiving. Hmm. These three things will help you to become uh, cool headed. So let us see how to do that. So one should practice tapasya in every way, with body, mind and words, purposes, huh? personal behavior and dealings with others. This is human life. That means animals actually spring back to action immediately, instinctively. But we should be able to use our thinking, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you're given to us, huh? thinking faculty, using our intelligence. Hmm? So we should uh, therefore study the scriptures and do the tapasya of tolerating. Hmm? Krishna says in 2.14, Ma tam stitik shasva bharata. He says, don't tolerate blindly, tolerate with wisdom. So I'll tell you some examples. For example, within a family, you know, parents tolerate their children, spouses tolerate each other. Why? Because we want to continue that relationship forever. I mean, till the last point. We don't want to break it. So sometimes you tolerate. One example I'll tell you. One uh, husband came back in the evening and wife asked him, did you bring that? I told you to bring it in the morning. Husband said, when did you tell me? He said, morning I told you. No, you never told me. He said. She said, no, I told you. Do you see, when you were standing here about to go, I told you in the morning. Do you remember? No? And then now husband can keep on saying, you never told me, you never told me. And the husband told her that, see, maybe you are imagining you told me, but you never told me, he said. She said, and she became even more upset. So finally, what an intelligent husband can do? Maybe I didn't hear you well. I was on a mobile or something. Ah, now you are accepted now. Okay, now you go and bring now. She may say that. So sometimes you find that for trivial things, we make a big issue. See, for you, the relationship with the wife is important. Or to prove that she never told you that is important. One has to ask. So it's called tolerating with wisdom. Sometimes she may be wrong, you may be right. But you agree to be wrong. Just like father and small boy, you know, when they fight, who generally wins? Boy wins or father wins? Do you think father exerts his full power and beats him to, you know, ground and says, I have won my son? One will never do that. Similarly, in those relationships which you cherish, it is always better for us. Because we love them, we can, we can uh, take, uh, you know, we can bend ourselves. Mm -hmm. So like this, we can, I can say many things. One is the relationship I told you. Think of the future consequences. Do you want to strain the relation or you want to uh, preserve? So in this way we can ask many things. So tapasya means putting voluntary restraint for long-term happiness. Huh? Austria body mind. Austria body mind speech, I have shown it. Huh? Okay. To get freedom from anger, Prabhupada says, one should learn how to forgive. Shama huh? arupam tapasvinaha, Prabhupada says. Huh? So we should learn to forgive. Forgiven are those who forgives others. This is from Bible. So, uh, why we should forgive others? See, perfectionists cannot forgive. No. They will say that this is my expectation. If you don't give it, my relationship with you is finished. They will say like that. And they have done it with many people like that. So, uh, therefore, we, we should not be too proud that I am always perfect. Sometimes even we can be imperfect also. So we may commit mistakes also. Mm. Uh, like, uh, I used to give my laptop to be protected in the train by, by my assistant. One very old assistant. But one day he was very tired. At, I was working till 11 and he was... He kept the laptop like this and went to sleep. I took it out and I hid in a place. And then I covered myself with the blanket. Because I, I told him to lock it always. That day he hadn't locked it. So I became very upset. When I took away from him, he was so fast asleep. He didn't notice it. I hid it and I locked it. And then this fellow suddenly got up after half an hour. He was... Then I was watching from a blanket. What is he doing? <laughs> yeah. And he walked here, there, everywhere in the train. He became very anxious because he knows this laptop has a lot of valuable things. Then I asked him, hey, what happened to you? And I scolded him very strongly that, you, how foolish you are. Huh? Some thief has stolen away and taken it. Huh? I'm very sorry Prabhu. You know, should I pull the chain? Should I call the TT and all that he asked? Then I told him, wait a minute, I revealed it after that. Huh? Here's the laptop. I told, I, I shouldn't scold you, I should... Uh, it, the mistake is my part because I trusted a fellow like you. Huh? Now I won't trust, I will only take care of it. So another three, four months passed. One day I got very tired in the train till 11 o'clock. Then I also kept the laptop like this and I was sleeping. So this fellow took it out of my hands. Huh? <laughs> huh? 
and he hit it. You know? Then I, actually, I didn't get up also. After two, three hours, so one o'clock or one thirty, I got up. Suddenly, I turned around and saw here also, here also. I didn't find the laptop anywhere. Hmm? And he got down, put on the lights, and he woke up many sleeping people. Huh? Sir, sir, any thief came? Did you see that? I kept my laptop here. Huh? They said, "Hey, why are you spoiling our sleep?" Huh? Then this fellow got up and said, "Prabhuji, any problem?" He said, "No problem. You go to sleep." I said, "I'll find out myself." Huh? Then he walked here, there. At last, I understood it's gone now today. Huh? Then when I came back, I was I couldn't sleep. I sat with my bed bag and chanting. Huh? So he told me, "Prabhuji, it's one thirty. Why are you chanting now?" Huh? I said, okay, you go to sleep, I told him. Then I told him the truth, laptop is gone today. <laughs> then he got down and he revealed the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Babuji, you made a big yuan cry three months ago when I did it. Now you also forgot. Now you asked me, nowadays, now in future, whom are you going to give? Huh? Then I told him, okay, I'll give it back to you now. Huh? Okay, I, I forgive you and you forgive me, finished. That's why I said, forgiven are those who... Okay, now I'll take some questions. I said I'll take, I, we are not having any time. Quality of saintly persons. Huh? Uh, basically, it's explained with many, many slides, if you see, you know. Uh, and lastly, you know, Prabhupada says that if there is discrepancy, a devotee forgives. Uh, it's a quality of saintly people, they should forgive, Prabhupada saying. Shamaru you know, that's explained. When should we get angry? It's the final part. Anyone can become angry, that is easy. But you should become angry with the right person, to the right degree, at the right time, with the right purpose and right way. Like that Aristotle says this. Huh? You should not be angry with anybody. Sometimes what happens, if an angry person comes to your room and the person who, on whom he is angry is not there. He is in another place. So he shouts at whoever is available. Huh? That should not be done. And that person will say, hey, I am not the reason. Say, okay, you are not the reason, but you are around, therefore I am telling you. Huh? you know? <laughs> And to the right degree. Degree means don't, if you have to become this much angry, don't become this much. Huh? At the right time, timing is also, publicly don't become angry. Chastise in private and glorify in public. Huh? And the purpose should be right. Huh? Like that he says. Uh, righteous anger. The parent can become angry with the child for good of the child. Teacher becomes angry with students. Like that he says, employer. That's all. Yeah, these are all examples, you know, Hanuman's example. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu example. Mm -hmm. Don't try to, okay. Thank you, Shri Prabhupada Ki. Let us take at least five minutes some questions. Huh? Actually, I, I was uh, spending some time on self-management also in the beginning. Therefore, we got a bit late for this. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I would have done little more justice to this, yeah. Actually, these two are not independent, it's uh, quite related also. Hmm. Self-management is taught in Bhagavad Gita in 2.56 to 2.72. Sita Prajna. Hmm. So, therefore, do self-awareness, then do self-management, and then eventually we will be able to control the anger. Oh, Prabhat is raising hand. Go ahead, Prabhat Prabhu. Yeah, go ahead. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your class. Thank you. I, I had a question uh, regarding lust being the cause of all kinds of anger, Prabhu. Or it is that is what I understand from that verse that every Correct. kind of anger arises from lust. Correct. So I was thinking about certain situations which, uh, at least applicable to me, sometimes gets me angry, and I, I was not able to spot lust at least at a gross level. So I was wondering if there are other reasons, or maybe there are subtle reasons, subtle lust which is not so obvious. So the primary uh, case I would say is like when. Uh, uh, somebody ends up making the same mistake again and again and again. That is very infuriating. Irritating. Yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, talking to customer care agents and not being able to convey your point. That is very, very irritating. That gets you a lot of uh, anger. And then there are some secondary examples where at least pride is there. I'm still not able to see lust as self. As you had mentioned, if somebody talks to you in an impolite way, your pride gets hurt, but again, I'm not sure where's the lust. See, I told you the definition of lust. Definition of lust is what? Adam and desire for the prohibited. Now, one of the prohibited actions is also to boss over others. For example, somebody is repeatedly, say, say for example, you are a boss and you have a subordinate who is an incompetent subordinate, for example. So, you may yell at him, you may push him, you may threaten him, 
we may do all those things. All those things are called as busing. Instead of that, we can sit with him politely and talk to him and get him trained up in what he is supposed to do. Or we can tell him that you are not good in this particular work. Can I change your department so you can function better in some other uh, type of service? Like that we can ask him. Or we can even fire him from the job also, you know, in a proper way. Tell him that in three months we are going to remove you, better you look for another job. No? None of this is counted as bossing. But keeping him, keeping incompetent person under me and uh, you know, criticizing him, yelling at him and uh, threatening him, all these things. So that, that is also lust only because here uh, this is prohibited behavior which we are re repeatedly resorting to and therefore it is control. Therefore it is counter as lust. It makes sense, no? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So what we should do with such living entities who are uh, displeasing us and uh, make us become upset, we, uh, we have to take a, a smooth action rather than my, my spiritual master told me, if you are upset with somebody for do, they are doing something, you know, so, okay, then take a necessary action without exhibiting anger, he said. And that is actually Sattva Guna. Sattva Guna means you politely explain to him and take a necessary, for example, you, you don't have to, I'm going to fire you from the job. You don't have to say that. We can actually fire him silently, you know, and get another qualified person for the job. You know? Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Puji, uh, one question. Uh, Puji, I like the point of uh, tolerating with wisdom and therefore to... Uh, actually, tolerating with wisdom itself is one more seminar. There are about six, uh, six to eight items in that. One of the things I told you was, relationship for which we have to tolerate yeah yeah Puji, so for this uh, the straight of forgiveness one of the trick that mind generally plays is it comes to mind is if if we keep forgiving the other person maybe in due course of time he starts taking you for granted mm. and continues with the same behavioral pattern Correct. and then i'm the one who is on the losing end of this you become a victim to yeah. him so Puji, yeah so is there a fallacy in this thinking uh, so, or uh, yeah what uh, what i would do i will tell you Say, for example, this fellow who takes me very late to the station, you know, my assistant, last minute catching train, I told you. So, what I told him, henceforth, you give me my train ticket and I will go ahead of you and I will be half an hour before the train comes. And you come at the last minute, if you caught it, it is all right. If you didn't come, then I'll go ahead. That's what I did after that. So, that way, you forgave him at that time, but you found out alternative way to make sure the thing happens. So, we, then we are not, we should not be dependent on them. Like, uh, we also find out devotees who are highly responsible. With them, we give them service. And the other fellows who are not so responsible, we give only those services, which even if they would not do also, still it won't matter much. That type of service you, do, you give them. Yeah. Like, like you tell them that, see here is a garden, you can make jandu flowers, make garland and you can offer it to Lord. If they don't offer, we can always purchase it. That kind of service you give them. Alright, no? Yeah, that makes Thank sense. you, yeah. Yes? Okay. Uh, the question is, if someone has hurt you and your loved ones beyond one's capacity to handle, just how Kauravas and did to the Pandavas, how can we forgive that person? Is, is maintaining distance is a good idea in that case and uh, no interaction? Thanks for the excellent class. Hare Krishna. Okay. So, it depends on which is that relationship. Uh, for example, if it is a husband-wife in, in this uh, world, uh, you will see in Vedic life, whenever there is a tussle between husband-wife, the wife would go to the parents' home, you know, maybe for a month or something like that. And husband has to cook daily, you know, and then he slowly starts recognizing the value of the wife. Uh, he understands that this is too much, you know, he feels, you know, going to office, coming, and then he may make a phone call. And then the wife may not pick up the phone. The wife's father may pick up and say that, you know, uh, she told me that you slapped her, therefore she has come here. So what do you want to do, you know, do you want to peacefully live with her or not, he will ask. And then he may say sorry and then they may come back again. Life goes on like that. Or sometimes, you know, the uh, wife is uh, this thing, but husband cannot go to his parents' home. He's already with parents only, you know. He, he cannot go. So then uh, husband can think about Getting the wife trained by some other Mataji who is a very sober and mature lady, she, he can put her in. I have seen many of the aggressive women uh, in their home, they might have had problems, but once they got connected to devotees, 
that aggression direction changed and they became very serious devotees huh? so far up devotees and they started bringing hundreds of people to the movement there are people like that actually their uh, that pushy pushy nature needed a vent in a positive spiritual direction you know huh? ah channelizing it yeah so the husband will see that instead of uh, her pushy nature coming on him now it is going and bringing people to the movement and she will go and give big big lectures big groups of people and she is busily engaged also and it is good also you know he has to channelize it like that so uh, and if it is not such a close relationship if it is like you know uncle or aunt or some different uh, distant relationship then uh, they can keep uh, i mean they can prefer to keep distance not a problem only go on occasions special occasions and speak a few words politely and come we we make it a formal relationship then becoming very informal and getting very close is not necessary but if it is a very close relationship like for example father and son sometimes can be angry you know like if a fa- because father wants son to become a doctor for example and son wants to join college of fine arts and he want to be an artist and the father feels in our family everybody is a doctor you know, you know mother father everybody then you don't want to be so he is very frustrated so here is example of father trying to control the son against his natural propensity so who is at fault is father at fault or son at fault your father is at fault here huh? and another example of a father and son now the son is a you know brahmana boy he wants to marry a muslim girl you know he is adamant but then the muslim girl says that you have to become a muslim you have to come to mosque and you know you have to keep beard and live like that he is not ready for it uh, otherwise the muslim girl says if my father comes to know you are chasing after me he will shoot you huh? he says then the father of the boy is telling beta don't lose your life chasing behind a muslim girl the whole community is very dangerous against you it's not good for you then here who is at fault father is at fault or son is at fault son is at fault in this example son is at fault then and in this way then what can the father do he is not listening he can go to somebody whom the son respects then he can take help and bring him to proper track like that so in this way you will see in this world uh, if it is within family because father son relationship is necessary so you can't tell the son hell with you do whatever you want in life don't show your face he can't say that he has to see even sometimes brahmachari is also in the jain ashram there's a big problem amongst the family members men and parents and parents some parents say that you never show your face at home but after he joins the brahmachari after 3 months he will say come home now they will call you know some parents will say don't come with your shaven head how the nearby people will ask us questions and some people fear also like that then they say you come to that place we come but eventually they connect because husband wife mother father son daughter how can you this relationships are very close relationships even if there are problems i know we have to find out how to mend it proper said mend them don't break them he said reform them don't remove them like that he says huh? yeah all right we can conclude our one last question anybody hari krishna prabhu thank you for the wonderful class of late um, i have been this question is bothering me um as a mother as a parent while disciplining your kids right whatever actions how, how old is she she is going to be 10 okay okay so what's her name navya navya yeah navya okay so as a parent mm-hmm. uh, whatever actions we take mm-hmm. um, we take it with a good intention for right. their uh, educational purposes or yeah. for their betterment um, but whatever actions we take does it count towards our karma the actions you take uh, for uh, disciplining our kids the child oh that is not a bad karma for you at all because you're doing with good intention just a like doctor is giving injection is he getting bad karma for that because doctor is giving injection for saving the patient so that's not bad karma at all and as a, as i told you towards the end the parents towards the children the teachers towards the students and the doctor towards the patients like doctor gives a bitter medicine and the patient is saying oh the medicine is so horrible you are causing me pain but doctor is not victimized by bad karma he is actually giving to save the patient so none of these people are victimized by bad karma at the same time we have to be very careful that we don't go overboard in disciplining because if we go overboard that's where i told you the difference between you know managing a subordinate and uh, bossing over a subordinate you know 
Just because children are tender and small and they are not independent, we can't lord over them. You know, actually great parents means they give freedom to the children also. At the same time, they try to ensure that the children are getting uh, freedom for healthy recreation, not harmful recreation. Huh? And uh, you, we all can think about our parents, how they were. Like in my times, you know, I remember when I joined engineering college, I don't remember at all whether I even made any phone call to parents. You know, once in six months we will come home. At that time they will get to see us talk and everything. Otherwise, nowadays if you find parents and children are in touch, in, in one day they talk so many times on phone. If you see the mobile, ever since mobile came. So, I feel that many times in the modern times there is a tendency to make our son or daughter a hero or a heroine, you know. Either an academic hero or heroine or... Even devotees also sometimes they want to see their son become like an Acharya, you know. They want to make like... And in the name of making them Acharya, they pump too many things to the children and children can't take it actually. Because everybody is, comes with their own Prarada Karma and everything. I would say that, I will give an example how we can raise the children. You have seen the small hen you have seen, yellow color or pink color, you know. Co -co 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 -co, it makes sound, it will be eating in the dustbin, you will see that. Very sweet looking, small size hen. So if you are throwing some grains to the hen, you know, it will eat it and then look up. Then again you throw, it will eat and look up. But if you try to catch it and feed it, it will get very frightened. Hmm? So like that we have to keep giving them good things. If they pick up, it is good. If they don't pick up, it's all right. So three things we can do. You can, uh, uh, you know, train them and educate them and offer facility to them. And from a distance watch what they are doing. And then give them peer association rather than we ourselves trying to give them everything. Hmm. So, like I heard about his own Rompad Maharaj, you know, Satyasarpa was telling that he uh, sometimes brings Mahatma Prabhu for the, these things, what do you call it, uh, seminars. No? Another time he brought Bir Krishna Goswami Maharaj, he brought. So he is himself a great soul, but he is bringing other great souls, why? He is uh, making it like a panel, they jointly present. You know, where it is a mother of enjoyment, we say, people also like it. And, and he knows that they are very powerful in their fields, certain fields, so he is bringing them, so the devotees can benefit also. So he is more open-minded in accommodating them. In the same manner, you can see in, uh, in uh, you are trained, yourself. for example, you can train them through your sister, you know, through other people in the family. And when they say child may listen also, many times. Many times children don't uh, open up to parents and when somebody else comes, they will talk to others also. <laughs> you see that. So, because they, the relationship is very thick with parents, therefore they fear to uh, reveal due to the fear that they will control me or something. So, you are controlled, otherwise it's not a bad karma, it's, uh, you deserve it. You deserve to bring them to the right path. But learn the art of doing it well. We have a book called as Art of Parenting. Uh, it's a bulky book with about 20. You have the book? It's available in Pune. I'll give you the, this thing, Prabhuji. It's voice, uh, voicepublication.in. In that, the book will be available. They can just click it and purchase it. It will be shipped also, it will come. It's actually www.voicepublication.in. In that, you will get it. So, that book is article, even Maharaj has written article, Zoranopad Maharaj has written article, um, Urmila Mata has written article in there. I have written my article also. I gave, I gave the heading, Grateful Children and Responsible Parents. That's what I, I wrote, one article. I have given a lot of events from my life, how my parents raised me and all that. So read those articles, learn the formulas given there, and that will help you in raising the child. Alright? Thank, Thank you so much. Bro. Thank you. Shil Prabhupada ki. Jai. ki. Prabhu, we would like to give you a quick summary and a thank you note. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, it was really uh, very engaging and very lot of practical examples. Uh, some of the points that I like for you is, uh, we started with how, like generally, um, the purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam is to align with uh, the will of Krishna. And li I like how you very succinctly described the will of Krishna. It is conformity with his laws and unity amongst uh, one uh, another. 
amongst one another very wonderful prithvi and then uh, how you went on to describe three modes and how when we are in satoguna we are in alignment with krishna's desire uh, and as a result of generally passion and ignorance uh, there is anger and then uh, a lot of examples of dhruva maharaj janme jay of how we overreact and uh, a lot of practical examples uh, and pujay also like the point of uh, self awareness before self management many times we are not even aware that uh, we are overreactors so just becoming more and more conscious and then uh, allowing for self management uh yeah, generally i like the activity very much where you give so many <laughs> examples got all the right answers yeah ji everyone got completely 100% <laughs> very interactive you also yeah, your wonderful acronyms easy to remember of the causes of anger c o i f and then uh generally prove yeah. <laughs> yeah, point of balance of how uh, this this combination of uh, courage and being considerate and in parenting being not being excessively lenient uh, not not being authoritarian but a balance is a, it's a very powerful combination devji thank you so much for the wonderful class hari krishna hari krishna thank you roshan prabhu so let's show our gratitude to radhesham prabhu by loudly chanting hari krishna mantra one time together hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama rama ram hare hare His Grace Radhe Radhe Shambhu Bhukhi Chai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai.